Uh, give me uh, do, uh, Leviticus 21.5. No, no, no. Sorry. 1 Corinthians 11. I'm going to show you one commandment we break today that we're still breaking. I'm going to show you it. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 30. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So this is order Paul's establishing in the church. The reason he has to establish order because it was chaos going on just like today. When you look at our households, who's leading the household, the modern household today for our people? The woman's leading. You think women should be leading? Who should be in the household today leading? Right. But what are they saying? As far as women, should I think of like all sorts of situations? Uh-huh. Lead in the household. Do you think a woman should lead the how they shouldn't? There should be a man there. When a man's in the household, what happens? We got structure and order. Why? We're the protectors. We don't allow BS to come in and pass. A woman's just acceptable. That's what they did in the Willie Lynch letter. They said, take the man out, castrate him before the woman. Now the woman's going to raise the children up in reverse roles. She's going to be close to the man and teach him and raise him effeminately. And the women she's going to raise to be independent. That's evident today. The man must be in the house. But because we're not in the house, watch this. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So our head is men. Who's our direct head? Christ, right? Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Exodus 17, 60. And the head of the woman is the man. You see? That's straight order. Christ, man, woman, right? Hey, go back to 1 Corinthians. All praises for that point. But watch this. Going. So the order is what? Christ, man, woman. Simple to be understood, right? We read it out the Bible. Do we interject any words in there? Easy to be understood, right? Watch this. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And guess what? Even Christ himself got to head, which is God, the Father. Makes sense, right? Now, dealing with us. Watch. Read. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. Now it's done specifically with us as men. It's saying if any man is praying or prophesying. Right now we're in the midst of prophecy. The Bible's coming out. You agree? So read it from the top. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. Our direct head was who? You remember? Christ. So it's saying any man praying or prophesying with his head covered. Dishonors his head. So what do you think that means? Making blind decisions. All right, right now. Is your head covered right now? Your head. Remember, don't worry. It's not deep. Because the first part we read was easy to be understood. It's easy to be understood. It's talking about if a man's head is covered. Think about in the church. Uh, back in the church, who used to wear the hats in the church? The women. The old ladies used to come with the big hats with fruits on them, right? <laughs> For design. Where did they get that from? Did the men, what, what did the men come? Did they come with those? We wouldn't come with them. What did the Bible just say? Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Any man praying or prophesying with his head covered, like the hat, right? That's a covering, a head covering, right? Dishonoreth his head. It says dishonors his head. Our head is who? Christ. So when prophecy's coming out, that's simple commandment. The way we show respect to Christ is by doing what? When we come to the Bible. Uncovering our heads. Just like when you go to court. You show honor by doing what? They take our hat off. That's what our God requires of us, Christ. So for you, well, Bree, what are you doing, sis? Sis, I got a quick question. What does she got on her head? How you doing, sis? Real quick, I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm complimenting your hair wrap real quick. It's nice. I like the color, the blue. That's very beautiful. What is she? She got a hair covering. Both of you guys got hair coverings on, right? Read. But every woman. Now, Dylan, sis, I want to show you something real quick. The Bible's talking about the women in particular. Every woman, every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered. So now, does that sister got her head uncovered or is it covered? It's covered. So it says, any woman with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. She dishonors her head, which is the man. 
So she's in order right now because she got her head covered. Teach. But as a man, are you in order right now with Christ with your head covered? You didn't know that was a law. So now we know better. What should we do? Do better, right? So what do you think you should do? All praises to the Most High. And guess what? That's a simple commandment that can be pushed in our communities today to help our people out. You know something else that can be pushed? Exodus, uh, is it 22, 16? Another thing that can be pushed. What if a lot of our uh, men and women do in our communities? Do they push marriage nowadays or do they just want to, what they call, hit it and quit it? One night stands. Right, well, our grandpa, a lot of our grandparents grew up with marriage, right? But today, we're not doing that, right? This is another commandment we can keep in our community to help our people out. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 22, and verse 16. Uh -huh. And if a man entices a maid. What does that mean if a man entices a maid? Think about it. Right, how, how do men do that today to other women? They can do it by money. They can do it by spitting spit game, what they say, right? He's trying to get at her for a purpose, right? If a man entices a maid, another woman, right? That is not betrothed. And she's not married or promised to anybody, right? So these are two single individuals. Hey, what's good with you? Where you going? Let me go. He's enticing her. He got an alternate ulterior motive, right? He shall and lie with her. And he lays with her. That's your what? One night stands? It could be between who? Boyfriend, girlfriend? He lays with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. He must do what to that woman? Make her his wife. Should he have been looking at that woman, Tobit A7, in that way if he wasn't thinking about wifing, being wife in that woman? He don't know that woman. She could be crazy as hell. But that's what our people commit. This is a commandment that will keep our community safe, right? If marriage was instituted. Boyfriend and girlfriends. You think that's okay, boyfriend and girlfriends? Before God? You think so? All right. All right, so we're gonna read. Uh, give me uh, Tobit, yeah, read. The book of Tobit, chapter eight and verse seven. And now, O oh Lord, I take not this, my sister, for lust. See that? It says, don't take your sister for lust. The way a lot of women dress today, you can see their bodies, why they got clothes on, right? Don't even got to take the clothes off, you already see what the, you already know what's being advertised and what you're purchasing, but they shouldn't be wearing that. What should women be wearing? Something. Not revealing, that's called modesty. Women should be wearing dresses. That's not being pushed in the community. Women are wearing leggings, now they're wearing, uh, what is it, the, the panties on the outside now, right? But it says, for us as men, this is how we must deal. Read it again. And now, O oh Lord, I take not this my sister for lust. We must not take our sisters for lust. Just like when a man entices a maid, he's taking her for lust. He see what he want. It's not to honestly, you know what? I'm trying to get married. Let me look for a righteous sister. It's not. I'm trying to get something off right now. You know what I'm saying? Go to Hebrews 13 and 4. Watch how God looks at marriage. Because the question was, do you think God honors boyfriend and girlfriend? Watch what God says about that. He gives it a specific word. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. The Bible says marriage is an honorable thing. It's honorable to be married. We don't see a lot of examples of marriage in our, in our uh, communities. We don't even see it on the news. Why don't they push black with black marriage, black with Hispanic marriage, Latina marriage, the Israelites marrying each other? They don't push that. They always show what? A Candace Owens with a white man? They'll push that all day. Interracial marriage, right? That's not of the Bible. Read. Marriage is honorable in all, and the pen on the file. But whoremongers. But what? Whoremongers. What do you think those people who aren't married but having sex lying around are called? Whoremongers are what? And adulterers. And adulterers. That's that's plain to be understood. That's the God we serve. He said if you're not married and you're lying around, what, you're a whoremonger? You're an adulterer. Free. God will judge. Those people fall into the judgment of God. 
And the judgment of God is not where you want to be. You want to be right with God. 20, so right, 25 and 1. This is where we got to be as men. We must look to get to institute marriage in our communities. Real quick, let me ask you a question. A lot of our people, because of the oppression and stuff we face in society today, we use certain supplements and things to, to accommodate, to, to, to make us numb to society. You get what I'm saying? What's some things we use today in order to, uh, we use it for like a healing property. So we don't got to face what, the reality pretty much. Smoking, drinking, some people can drink excess, so right, get drunk. For us as a people, me, myself, I used to smoke. I read the Bible, the Bible told me I was a temple, I had to put it down. If I'm trying to be right with God, how am I going to do a such thing? We're going to read you what the Bible says about that. Give me 1 Corinthians, right? I'm going to show you this, then I got one more question I'm going to ask you. Come on, 1 Corinthians 3. Watch this. Hey, who's that man over there all the way on the end? You know who that is? What about this man right here? Who's he? Who, who they want us to believe that is? They want, they say that's Jesus Christ, right? What does Jesus Christ look like? What is, so what does he look like? He don't look like that. What does he look like? He look like you. Okay. All right, we're going to go in the Bible. We're going to read this first, and then we're going to see. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. See that? Reading this scripture tells us we're what? What, what should we be? The temple of God. Think about that, a temple where God dwells. It's going to be what? Clean? Ain't no defilement going to be up in there. No smoke's going to be up in there, right? Read. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You know what the Spirit of God is? This, that should be in us, John 6, 63. It says we're a temple and the Spirit of God dwells in us. What do you think that Spirit of God is? It should be inside all of us the Israelites, especially the men, to lead the nation. What do you think that spirit should be? Watch this. The book of John, chapter 6, and verse 63. Hey, at the air pump, we're going over ourselves and how special we are before God. This is what must be in us as a people. Read. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickened it. It's the spirit that's going to change us. Change us from being in a boy mind state to a man mind state from being not concerned with our people to having to care for our people. Read. The flesh profited nothing. Us doing what we want to do, that fleshly stuff, such as what? Going out to clubs, sleeping around. That doesn't profit us at all. Read. The words that I speak unto you. The words that he's speaking unto us, which is what? The Bible. They are spirit. That's what that spirit is. It should be dwelling in us. Just like we brought out about the care covering, right? About that men shouldn't have it. You took that off. Guess what? That spirit's dwelling in you. You did a simple act, uh, followed a simple commandment. That wasn't hard to do, right? That's what should be dwelling in us. When we read a commandment, we should say, dang, you know what? I was in error. I didn't know that. Let me do right. Let me get back right with my God, right? Going back to who Christ is. Because they say this is Christ, right? Watch this. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This right here is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Who has white? Well, we got, we know white, white hair is for what? Older men get it with wisdom, right? But who has woolly textured hair on the earth today? We got woolly textured hair. That's one sign right there. Does he have woolly textured hair? This man right here? Hell no, he got straight hair, right? Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Read. And his eyes. And his eyes. It says now Christ's eyes were as a flame of fire. It says that his eyes were red. Does this man got red eyes? He don't got red eyes. You know why Christ got red eyes? He drank wine in moderation. Right. When Christ was walking the earth, he drank wine. We could drink wine. We just can't drink to get drunk. But he drank wine. When we drink wine, what happens to the white of our eyes? Our blood vessels dilate. And the blood, you can see it more, so our eyes turn red. Read. And his feet. Now it's going to describe Jesus Christ's feet. 
like unto fine brass. It says his feet were like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Like a copper color, like a penny. What color is a penny? It's brown, like your arm, right? Read. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. It says he was so dark it looked like it was burned in a furnace. If you burn anything, what does it come out? Ashes. It comes out ashes. What color does it come? Black. It comes out black, describing Jesus Christ himself as what? Black. He was a black man according to the scriptures. He That's was right. he looked like us. Right. He was dark brown. Right. That's who Christ was when he walked the earth. What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example.